superchargers. They're like a belt-driven, high-octane energy drink for your engine. But how does this hunk of metal actually work? What are the benefits of strapping one to your engine, and are there any downsides? Today on Autolab, we're gonna find out. Superchargers are nothing new. They've been boosting engine performance for over a century. Back in the late 1800s, a couple German dudes took one look at the Roots Brothers industrial air pump that was developed for blast furnaces and thought, what if you could use that to force more air into an engine and make it more powerful? And just like that, the first supercharger was born. See, both superchargers and turbochargers are designed to force feed an engine more air. But unlike turbos, which rely on exhaust gases, superchargers are directly driven by the engine itself, usually using a belt that's driven off the crankshaft. Remember, at its core, an engine is just a giant air pump, and the more air it moves, the more power it makes. But engines are limited by how much air they can suck in or induct on their own. And when we cram more air into an engine using a supercharger or a turbo, well, that's called forced induction. And using a supercharger to get that done is one of the oldest tricks in the book. So how do these bad boys work? Well, it depends, because there are three basic types. All superchargers use the mechanical rotating energy of the crankshaft to spin either a set of rotors, screws, or an impeller. The first two are considered positive displacement superchargers because they displace a consistent proportion of air with each rotation which means we get a steady and consistent boost regardless of engine RPM and load. And in the world of positive displacement superchargers, boost lag is a term that doesn't exist. If you wanna learn more about boost lag, go watch the video we did on turbochargers next. Centrifugal superchargers work a little different, but we'll get to those in a sec. The root style blower is the granddaddy of superchargers. It's the simplest design, and I can pretty much guarantee you've seen one poking out of the hood of an old muscle car. Unlike the other types, root style superchargers don't actually compress the air inside the housing. Instead, they work like a pair of big air scoops, grabbing up huge amounts of the stuff and blowing it into your engine like a big fan. Inside a root supercharger, there are two big rotors with symmetrical lobes. They mesh together and force air around them and down into your intake. It's not the most efficient design, especially at higher RPMs, but it's by far the most popular and gets the job done with a lot of style and big loud whine. Think cars like the Dodge Demon. The twin screw supercharger looks similar to the roots, but has a few key differences. Instead of just blowing the air into the engine like a fan, twin screws use, you guessed it, two big screws, one with lobes and one with veins. And as the air flows through, those screws compress the air before ejecting it out to the engine. And instead of big holes on the top and bottom of the housing for air to flow straight down and around the lobes, twin screw superchargers take air in on one side and suck it through the tapered veins before shooting it out the other end. Twin screw superchargers are more efficient than the roots type because how they gradually increase air pressure through the veins. That results in denser, cooler air to the engine which increases performance. They're also a bit quieter and typically smaller in physical size, but they still deliver that instant boost we call the rate. Finally, we have the centrifugal supercharger. It looks more like a turbo and works sort of like one too, using a spinning impeller to compress the air. Centrifugal superchargers are the most efficient of the bunch, but they don't provide that instant boost like the other types. Instead, they build power gradually as the engine revs, making them a popular choice for high revving engines and with the aftermarket community because they're typically pretty easy to install. And don't require you mess around with the exhaust system or oiling circuit or sometimes the cooling system like you have to with an aftermarket turbo. <laughs> Plus, they fit on more engines. A lot of cars don't have the space between the top of the engine and the hood you need to fit a positive displacement supercharger. And not everyone is into cutting a huge hole in their hood. Air gets sucked in using a high-speed impeller and then gets shot out through the impeller housing using centrifugal force, where that high-speed air meets resistance and slows down, turning air velocity into air pressure. If low RPM boost is what you're after, a centrifugal supercharger isn't the move. Once they get spinning though, yeah, they throw down just like their bigger brother. By now, you're probably thinking, with any supercharger, what's the downside? More power, easy installation, and less complexity than a turbocharger? Count me in! But there's a catch. 
Because the supercharger is driven directly by the engine, it actually takes some power to make power. It's like hiring a personal trainer that also eats half your lunch. That's called parasitic loss. Huge superchargers like the ones used on top fuel dragsters can take up to a thousand horsepower to run. But don't worry, the gains usually outweigh the losses by a mile. That thousand horsepower blower on a top fuel car returns you in the neighborhood of over 11,000 ponies. Still though, unlike a turbocharger which harnesses the thermal energy of your exhaust gases to make boost and do increase engine load slightly, superchargers take more power to run. Then there's all that dang heat we gotta deal with. Just like with the turbo, all this air compression creates a lot of heat. And hot air isn't what we want. As air gets hotter, it also gets less dense, which means fewer oxygen molecules getting into your engine. And that's where intercoolers come into play. An intercooler works just like a radiator, pulling heat out of the compressed air before it enters the engine, boosting air density. The problem is, for the positive displacement superchargers, is fitting the intercooler into the system can be a challenge. It's gotta go between the compressor and the intake manifold, where space is already at a premium. It's not such a big deal with centrifugal compressors, though. Just run a front mount. They're functional and they look cool. So why choose one style of supercharger over another? Or how about using a supercharger instead of a turbocharger? Well, the big thing here comes down to how much space you've got under the hood. For a lot of cars out there, fitting one style of supercharger over another isn't really going to be feasible. That's why cars like the Volkswagen Corrado used a centrifugal compressor. It comes down to packaging. The biggest pro with a positive displacement supercharger is that instant boost. No lag, just power on demand from any RPM. If it wasn't for the wine, from the driver's seat anyway, these cars drive more like they just have a more powerful naturally aspirated engine. In general. Roots-style chargers are less expensive than a twin-screw design, but you give up a little efficiency. For centrifugal chargers, they're easy to install and typically less expensive, but like a turbo, they have the drawback of lag. And unlike a turbo, you can't really control how that boost comes on or even how much boost it makes without changing hard parts. Superchargers might not be as common as turbos these days, but they still have a loyal fault, and for good reason. If you want instant reliable power, and you don't mind a little extra complexity under the hood, a supercharger might be just what the doctor ordered. And even though turbocharging has mostly taken over, superchargers are still being developed and used today, like on the B8 generation Audi S4. Later ones even had an electromagnetic clutch so that the supercharger could be essentially switched off when you didn't need it to boost efficiency. Or there's the current Audi S6 and Mercedes E53, which use electric superchargers combined with turbos to basically eliminate turbo lag. So that's superchargers. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a like. We've got more videos coming on everything from engines to exhausts to tuning and suspension. If you liked learning about superchargers, then do yourself a favor and go get learned up on turbochargers right over here. Or go check out Brad's latest list of cheap cars with insane tuning potential right down here. My name's Trav, thanks for hanging out with me today on Autolab, and I'll see you all with a fresh video next week.